Man, I suck at video recording. So as you can see, I've laid out my topics I'm gonna be talking about right here. And if you're looking for instant gratification, there you go, you can exit out of the video now. Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Welcome to my channel, my name is Jay. And today I'm gonna to be talking about five things colleges do or don't teach you. Before I get started with that, just a little disclaimer, this is all gonna be based on my experiences and what I've felt all throughout my college career time. So I'm not sure if it applies to your colleges or your college experience, and by no means I am shitting on colleges or saying that you should not go to college, but this is something which everyone needs to be aware of, especially being in our generation and the people younger than us, millennials, Gen Z and everyone, we need to know and have this stuff under our belt so that we could succeed in life when it comes to getting out of the college and getting into workforce. So as you can see, I've laid out my topics I'm going to be talking about right here. And if you're looking for instant gratification, there you go. You can exit out of the video now. Okay, all jokes apart, there are a lot of essential skills in life which colleges don't really care about or they don't really focus on, but it's really helpful if you know it in life and it will really help you succeed in life. Not paperwork, but it's about how to fill out forms. Important forms regarding your life like, like FAFSA, Social Security, Taxes, 401k, how to do your initial paperwork when you get hired, what is W-2, what is 1099. They don't teach you any of that stuff and you are just overwhelmed with all of that information when you get into the workforce and they bombard you with all such forms and you don't really pay attention to those, you just like kind of go with the flow and sometimes it could wreck you. For example, whenever you get hired at a new job, they make you fill out a W-4 form and I'm not sure about the subsection but there comes a section where you have to put in a zero or one onto it and if you mess that up, it ends up like you paying more in your taxes, more taxes or less taxes depending on how you fill that paperwork out and at the end of the year when you come to file your income taxes, you're supposed to pay for the difference. Number two, taxes. Well, this is kind of a no-brainer that government goes hand in hand with schools and colleges, so they're not really gonna focus on or they're gonna or they're not gonna teach you on how to do your taxes properly or how to work your way around it. You see, rich people, like their parents, they kind of teach their kids from the get-go, like how do how do taxes work, how government works, and they know the system, so they find a loophole around it or they kind of curve around it to avoid their taxes and that's how a lot of major corporations or a lot of big players do not end up paying a lot of taxes and a common man like you and me ends up paying a lot in taxes. I would give you just one example. There are two types of taxes, federal income tax as well as state income tax. Now depending on the state you're living in, you're also paying some sort of income tax. Luckily, I am happen to be living in Texas right now where there are no state income taxes so I get to avoid those taxes. But if you look at the federal level of income tax, based on your income bracket, you're paying anywhere from 10% to 24 to 25% to maybe 30%. And that's just federal income tax. And then they're gonna tack you on with the social security tax, Medicare tax, and all other taxes. And let's say if you're, living, if you're an individual living in California, then your, income, uh, your state income tax will also apply onto that so sometimes it ends up taking a huge chunk of money out of your paycheck that essentially hinders you from moving up in the social ladder and it also handicaps you in a lot of ways and if you're not aware of that fact then we're gonna have a hard time and just like how this social atmosphere outside have made it clear a lot of people are gonna suffer and that is one of the main motivations which, which kind of drove me to starting out my own channel and talk about this as much as I can and inform a lot of people out there and try to help them out. Besides that example, there are a lot of other cases where government can like tack you on with all those taxes and you won't even know it's gonna be affecting you. Boring! A lot of people know and they don't kind of talk openly about it but government is no one's friend. And like how I mentioned, based on the social atmosphere outside, you might have known about the stimulus checks and everything. So you should be able to figure it out now, like how much government is looking out for you versus how much everyone's out for themselves. Another thing that goes hand in hand with taxes is personal financing. How do you get a debit card? What is a credit card? What is a credit? How to maintain all that? What is a bank account? How to do anything banking related stuff? None of that stuff is teached on to you. 
And to be honest, they don't really want to focus on that either because, like I said, government and a lot of institutions go hand in hand. They're kind of all in it together versus a common person who's not that much in it together. They're always out there to screw you if you're not careful about it. I'll do you another one. If your account goes in negative in a bank account and you're not able to take care of that within 24 or 36 hours, they're going to tack on with like another $36 of insufficient funds fee. Now, think about it. They're not going to do that for a rich person who's making a lot of money. Why? Because they're careful with their money management and they're not going to let that happen. But what is going to happen to a poor person who's not able to keep up with his bills from month to month, they're going to fall short. And when they fall short, banks are always there to, out to get them rather than helping them. And by all means, I'm not a social worker either, but I'm just trying to inform all this and teach all this as best as I can. Because at the end of the day, if I'm doing better and you're not, then there's something wrong. Because like, I, like you might have seen in the, one of the first videos, I am starting out with quite some of debt because of the, all such mistakes which I've made in my past. And I don't want anyone else out there like you to make those mistakes again. Along with personal financing, like how I said, like they don't teach you how to, make, how to have your own bank account, how to have a debit card account, how to have a credit card account. They also don't teach you what is investing, what is saving, how to invest your money and make it grow for yourself, how to be successful in life. Those are not the concepts they're going to focus on. What colleges are mainly concerned about is teaching you some abstract or, how do you say, complex concepts which no one really gets it in one day. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of Excel. And that is why colleges focus on that. Their pers uh, all those institutions' perspective is that all this stuff should be taught by your parents, like how, how do you clean, how to cook, how to do your own laundry, same as well how to do your own taxes, how to fill out your proper forms, and how to succeed in life. But in reality, not everyone has the same amount of exposure, like how rich parents provide their kids. Not everyone starts out on the same foot. Unfortunately, I happen to be one of those as well. My parents didn't teach me any of this stuff. They did not know anything about taxes. And that's how I ended up falling into this loophole as well. The only thing I could think about possibly is from now onwards not to make any of those mistakes again and possibly teach my kids well when time comes and hopefully it all works out and once you break out of this vicious cycle. Here's some of the statistical data I would like to nerd out on. So, if you're doing a normal bachelor's degree or completing an undergrad with four years in a university, on an average, you're gonna end up with $30,000 in debt and maybe more depending on your major and depending on situations, if you're studying in-state versus out-of-state out and if you're going for the whole nine yards of the college experience by moving out of your parents' house, going out living in the dorms, which always charges more than just tuition and fees for other B. It also accounts for other BS charges, which you never really see in the full breakdown of this. For example, transportation, living room, living board and fees, athletic fee, garage fee, walking fee, smoking fee, breathing fee. All sorts of fees are applied onto your bill in your colleges. And people are not normally aware of that unless you check your breakdown and see what kind of fees have you been charged with. Majority of the times, those are non-negotiables. So it's not like you could like get your amount deducted from that. The best way to avoid that is get like a full ride scholarship or a lot of scholarships uh, working in your favor to make your college experience cheaper. And if you're going out in, with a grad school, on an average, you're going to be ending up with $60,000 in debt. And a lot of times people forget to calculate or people forget to realize on what type of profession they're entering in for versus what type of uh, lifestyle they would end up with. You will realize after finishing your college that you are you have a lot of debt versus how much you're making in a year outside. So it's only gonna be more and more hard for you to pay off your student loans. And if you're not careful about that, you might end up paying bills for the rest of your life. I know a lot of people online are pretty tech savvy and aware about these facts, but in reality, I've seen a lot of people outside who don't really care about all this stuff and end up paying for their student loans for 10 years or more. That's crazy. You're paying like the f uh, first few years just interest and they don't even care about that as long as they're making the minimum payments. That's bad. You should be never doing any of that. And you should be focusing on paying off your student loans the first thing soon as you graduate so that you don't get tacked on to with, with those long lasting interests and you're not making those institutions money and once you get out, get out of your student loans you could finally start making money for yourself. There are a lot of other ways to make money besides just having a regular full-time job. 
in case you didn't know this is 2020 60 hours is the new full time everyone's out there having a full time as well as a part time job or some kind of a side hustle going just to live by and pay their bills on time that's ridiculous that should never be the reality but the reality is this is America my parents moved here thinking that we're coming into the land of opportunities and in the past seven to eight years I've spent here I've realized that this is not the land of opportunities but this is a land of consumerism you're making a dollar but you're spending a dollar and a half at the same time you're tacking on to all those credit card debt and you don't even realize it that all the banks and all the institutions are giving you money but in the end they're the ones profiting off of it and you're the ones who's gonna be suffering in the long term and I cannot tell you how much pissed off I am on myself for get, falling into this trap but the thing is I had no one to teach me all this stuff or I had, I had to basically figure all this stuff out on my own and I don't want anyone else to go through such experience hence this channel look I'm not here to talk about how schools and colleges and the government are in total brotherhood and you're the only victim out there trust me no one cares uh, they don't even know you exist and the only time they care about you when you have to pay your bills or when you don't pay your bills and it's pass over due and they need to collect money from you but at the end of the day what I'm trying to tell you is that schools and colleges are a really important tool for you to progress in life like logically speaking when the older generation retires it creates a it creates a void in the system and schools and colleges helps you to fill that to fill that void and help you uh, be a part of this society and I'm not advising anyone to be a rebel or to go against this system and just go to trade, trade school or don't even go to colleges but what I'm rather advising you is that you be aware of the facts how colleges and schools work and how the government is so systematically broken that you're able to take out hundred thousand dollars of loans on yourself before you're able to drink legally just because you're 18 and older okay moving on to our next one everyone likes to have a lot of friends but networking is not about that it's about having professional contacts where you know a lot of other people in your same work field or maybe other depending on which field are you interested in and where would you like to go in today's a and age majority of that is done on LinkedIn but you could also do it outside of LinkedIn where you meet people in person or you call up places or you try to find a relative who knows a relative or a person who knows someone and try to get into the field using such contacts nepotism can be a thing it's okay to use your social influence in order to land you in a better spot than you are right now all right last but not the least public speaking this is not about getting up in front of your class and reading a bunch of paragraphs from a notebook it is about how to talk to people and when it comes to like huge masses and groups it could be really helpful if you're actually working in a corporate kind of job or one where it involves talking to a lot of people and in a lot of cases it doesn't really matter but it is a beneficial skill to have in life which could really help you out or which could really spread your message out there so late. one of the examples could be this stage fright is a real thing by all means I agree I totally agree with that I guess like how, how it said trust the process practice only makes you perfect and I'm, a, I'm here for the longer and not for the short one this is one of the skills which not a lot of people focus on but they should this skill is really helpful in life and it would help you spread your message out, out, out in the world and maybe inspire some souls just like how I'm trying to do it all in all what I'm trying to say is this skill will really come out in handy if you're trying to impress someone like your boss your significant other or anyone else important in your life and spread out your message it's a great personality building tool so if it's being teached in your schools or colleges I would say grab on that opportunity and take it because not only every college is, is teaching this or not every school or college focuses on some real life skills which everyone should have with that said I'm done ranting for the day if you like my video please like share or subscribe and stick around there's more ranting videos upcoming until then I'll see you guys later 